this is not a rover ride, but um, it's uh, it's just a, a, it shows you what outdoor cycling looks like. And so my general plan for this for this presentation um, is to show you several pictures, about fifty, of how much fun it is. I'm saving the moonlight pictures for the end. And then any questions, please stop and ask. During the presentation, I'll talk a little bit about gear and I'll talk about bikes. Um, at the end, I'll talk more about bikes. I'll talk more about gear. And again, the whole time, please let me know if you have a question and, um, and um, we'll talk about it. I'm just adjust my camera. Okay, so this is a trip. I forget how it showed up. One of my Rover friends mentioned it and um, I said, cool, let's go. So here we are just in the woods. You know, it's a kind of a gray day, but lots of smiles. People are out there enjoying the ride. There's Brian Goodspeed going across a bridge on the trail. There's Jody Rio. Um, we, we, Jody and I have become very good friends through Rovers. We cycle together a lot and you'll be hearing more, more about Jody later. I actually asked her to join. She still might, I hope she does, but she was out making cookies for the homeless tonight. So she had a very good reason for not making it. This is the river, uh, river bottoms. So we're just out there cruising through the woods, winter day. This is a different ride. Sometimes Jody and I just get together on a nice day. Um, I, I've helped a lot of people start cycling, but Jody was cycling long before I got back from England. So um, she's an absolute, um, she just goes for it. And with some background, She's from Utah. <laughs> it's not quite as cold out there as it, I mean, as, as cold in Utah as it is here. It really, where else is colder than Minnesota in many ways. Um, but like a lot of rovers and a lot of people I've met, she just has to get outside. Um, I'll point out some gear. Um, Jody's actually wearing a ski helmet here. I think it's a pretty good idea. I, I don't use that. Um, I, I don't ski enough for one. But she's got a ski helmet. She's got some goggles on. She uses pogies, which are the things in the handlebars. Um, Jody throws some um, uh, hand warmers in there and her fingers just stay toasty. Uh, her fingers get cold, my toes get cold. So we'll talk, I'll talk more about that later. Here we are, um, we are in the area of, let's see, what is it called? Crosby Farm um, Park. And, you know, just had to capture that moment. And, and her smile says a lot too. Around here we stopped and I had to grab a picture just because it was a wonderful winter moment. And so I'm talking about cycling, but of course the larger thing, you're just getting outside. And I don't, I cycle fast sometimes. I, I, I like a nice downhill, but I'm also out there to stop and take a picture and just enjoy the moment. Sometimes you fall. <laughs> uh, she doesn't know I'm including this picture, but uh, it, um, guess what she did after she fell? She got up, <laughs> you know, so sure you fall, um, but it's, it's very much like cross country skiing. You're, you're gonna get out there, you're gonna slip once in a while, you fall soft, you know, I've, I've, I have fallen a whole bunch, and I'll, I'll show you some more of that in a second. Um, but especially in the winter time, you slide and it's soft, it's not that big of a deal. This is the places where I fell. So this is the trail and um, that's clear ice. So that was tough to navigate. Um, when I'm on really slippery stuff, I either get off and push and go into the snow. Um, but if I have to roll, I just, I go straight. I get my legs down, I spread them out. So I'm, I, I'm getting some balance on both sides. I can also catch my bike if something goes wrong. But if you go in a straight line, you, you're pretty stable. But so there's like three options to consider. You can um, go in a straight line, stay, don't turn on the ice. Second, get your feet down uh, off the pedals and coast and so you can stabilize your bike and catch yourself. Or three, get off and walk. Nothing wrong with that. There's some more of the ice. This is on a road um, when I was commuting. I commute to work in the, in the winter time as well. So and these, these next pictures are from my commute. The snow was so high, my bike stayed up by itself. Um, so I have a, um, I have a surly ice cream truck and um, 
I like surly bikes. I, I don't spend money on snowmobiles or pickup trucks or I don't even have a house. So I don't even spend money on house projects. So I spend a little bit more money on bikes, but I will later on, I will also, so this is about a $2,000 bike. Later on, I'll, I'll talk about a $600 bike and that's what Jody's riding and some other friends of mine ride. Um, they do fine. Um, you know, I, I like what this bike offers, um, but I could also get by in a much less um, expensive bike. Do you use studded yes. tires or? Sorry? Do you use the stud, studded tires on your bike or? After I cycled on that, I bought studded tires. Yeah, good, good question. Very good question. Um, currently, I, uh, studded tires for a fat bike um, are roughly $100 each. Um, and that's for the, the less expensive ones. They still work. Those are the ones I, I own the least expensive ones. But since they are more expensive, I take them off in the summertime or the autumn when there's not ice. Good question. Those tires go down to a, a five, five PSI pounds per square inch. So a road bike, like is something that like can be a hundred PSI. These are sitting at five. And that brings up another interesting point. When I go in the, when I go from the winter time to the summer, winter time on, I'm losing my camera here. Winter time on my fat bike, the summertime on my road bike with that high pressure tire on my road bike. All of a sudden my road bike feels really bumpy and rough because that low pressure and that tire absorbs everything. So um, I was talking before the meeting, when people first see a fat bike, they're like, wow, it looks so big and, and kind of, you know, kind of rugged. Um, in fact, I call it a gentle giant. They're really geared down low. Um, and with that wide tire, you can go even slower and stay stable. Um, really a lot of fun. Going back to David Byrne, um, you know, I, 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 how can you not enjoy David? He's a great guy. And he cycled around the world twice. Um, David has told me that he's actually making a, a deliberate effort not to buy a fat bike. Because he knows if he does, he won't cross country ski anymore. Um, I have skis, um, but they don't work so well in, in, in warm winters. So I'm moving more toward the fat bike. Some more of my commuting. Um, I cycled a lot in London. I, I came to like city cycling. Sometimes it gets a little tight, but the sights are always worth it. I mean, you just see some beautiful things. And just, you know, starting the day on my bike and finishing on my bike, um, that's one reason why, that's actually, it's a pretty big reason why I live in apartments. I want to be able to buy, to get an apartment that's close to work so I can bike to work because biking to work is a really big deal to me. Just starting the day on my bike, finishing the day. And I don't understand being in a car a lot. That's not, in London, I didn't own a car for seven years because it's silly to have a car in London. They have mass transit and I bike to work. So in any case, um, I've gotten to the point where cars feel a little foreign to me. See, my glasses are getting a bit foggy there. It happens. Okay, back to uh, getting away from the Twin Cities. I'll show you a trip that me and a former um, uh, girlfriend took to the North Shore. She was not into cycling um, before she knew me. She didn't even really, no, she did She did not have a bike. And so, um, but she's willing to give it a try. And I think you'll see some pretty sincere smiles coming up. There she is. So she's on a fat bike, uh, about a $600 fat bike. And you can tell she's had, I mean, she's smiling. She's having a good time. There she is again. I mean, you're all, it's fun. Basically it gets you outside and you know, it's just when I, when I see this, these pictures and I'm, even now, if I, if I see the sun out, on a winter day, I gotta get out there because we need something. We gotta enjoy these winter times. And then I, I do enjoy some some clever photography. And so sometimes I'll put the bike down and just start taking some nice pictures. At least I hope they're nice. 
I wonder if I could do slideshow on here. Eh, I'm not going to try to screw around. We were in uh, on some bike trails near Split Rock Lighthouse. You probably saw, noticed, you recognized Split Rock a moment ago. Sometimes the hills are steep, so I pushed. <laughs> Again, it's, it's it's that's no problem. Um, um, I, I, I cycled across the U.S. A couple, a couple summers ago, and even then I pushed my bike because I'm not out there to prove anything that I'm this tough and blah 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 blah. I don't need that stuff. I want to have fun, and so if that means you know pushing up a hill, push it up the hill. Okay, so this is what the, um, the, the pictures that um, uh, Fran or Donna mentioned earlier. Uh, something I learned when I was a teenager, uh, cross country skiing in Minnesota, is that if you get outside during a full moon, the, the light, that moonlight bouncing off the snow is so bright, it casts shadows. And so um, it's, a pretty special, it's a pretty special occurrence. It's also rare. You have to make, you have to really get a few things lined up. As you'd expect, you have to get a full moon. But then you have to get in to see when the moon rises and when the moon sets. So, um, of course, I mean, I like it. I, I don't, I, I, I go to sleep earlier and earlier these days. So I try to see a moon rise around, oh, I don't know, 4 or 5 p.m. Because by then it's getting higher in the sky around 6 or 7. And so you can start seeing these kinds of lights. Um, <laughs> one of the, one of the, one of the thousands of mistakes I made when I was younger was I went out at night to enjoy this moonlight and I was really having a great time. I cross country skis, the moon was out, it was a peaceful night. And then the moon set, it was really dark. Um, so now I pay really close attention to see is that moon, you know, is it rising or is it setting? Because if it sets and you're out there, it can get dark kind of fast. And I bring a light just in case. And of course, it has to be a clear night. So careful moonrise, um, clear night, and, and then you're off. Again, this is entirely moonlight. Um, the pictures are a little more gray in color. It, it, it was bluer when we were out there. This is done near Hidden Falls Park in St. Paul. I get a little artsy. I put my phone down my tire while I'm, while I'm rolling. I can almost hear the snow while I'm showing these pictures. Uh, something else about winter cycling, again, kind of like hiking or cross country skiing, the snow sounds different based on the temperature. And um, I enjoy that. I enjoy getting out in all the different temperatures. Um, personally, I'm good until about 20 below wind chill. Um, and I can't stay out there for long, but I enjoy that the different world that's out there. Um, the different sounds, the different air. All the molecules in the air, as you know, probably know, but it's worth mentioning, they freeze. <laughs> so <laughs> the air is clear, the air is fresh. I like getting a little artsy. And it's just so quiet because the, the snow is absorbing all, all, most of the sound. And there's a real reason I was out there to enjoy that nice moonlight. Um, that's what I have for pictures. Um, any questions or comments at this point?
<laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> so what do you use on your face? I can't see on here, but when um, the other pictures, you didn't have anything on your face. Do you um, oh, good question. So oftentimes, um, I'm good with just goggles, but hang on a second. I'll be right back. I'll show you what I wear. Okay. Sorry, I had to get the cat. Um, so it's cross-country skiing wear. So I'm not sure how well it'll show up here, but it's a, you know, the standard face mask. I'll put it on. Mm -hmm. So I have, um, has a little um, area for my nose here, some holes, my mouth, goggles go over here. And then if I get warm, I just, I just pull it down. It's pretty thin. Mm -hmm. So I, I pick, I have my REI credit card. And so I pick that up off my REI um, points. <laughs> um, I, I do pretty good without, I don't cover my face that often. So uh -huh. uh, I get used to it. But, and when I get really in, get into commuting, um, I write down what I wear for different days. Something else that I really like, another Rover friend of mine introduced me to these. So these two things, these are earmuffs. Wow. Yeah. So I couldn't wear a band on my head, but that makes my, um, that makes my uh, helmet a little tighter and sometimes the band itself. I got a massive head, so that doesn't help. But these help. And so basically, they have a little, they kind of pop in and out. Pop in, pop, pop out, pop in. And then they just go over your ear and they're on. Don't fall off. Wow. So what are they called? They are called earbags. Earbags. Where did you find those? Um, little store called Amazon. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, earbags. Sure. Come in multiple colors. I chose the plain ones. They come in black, red. Pick your, pick your color. Um, and yeah, they, they're, they're just so simple. Earbags. So I have the, the typical face covering. I have uh, my goggles, as you can see here. I have my earbags. Um, that covers me from the neck up. For the rest of what I wear, um, I'd like all of you to just sort of think to yourself. A lot of you um, have done some cross-country skiing, have done some winter hiking. And so I guess I'm kind of curious to hear from you. What's your favorite gear? Please unmute and say, hey, this I, I got my earbags. <laughs> I started the conversation. What works best for you? What gear really works for you? Well, I, I, you had mentioned your toes get cold too. Yeah, I've been doing some winter biking and uh, so I was kind of curious what you do there. I just bought a pair of Dunham boots, uh, which are made by New, New Balance. And so it, they're mostly good to 25 below. I just tried them out today and uh, I'm not sure they're good at 25 below, but it was a lot warmer. <laughs> right. Using those. Yeah. yeah. That's, good. That's a good question. Yeah. I'll, I'll answer it. Um, my thing is my feet. And I, I have some Columbia boots that are rated really low as well. There's, there, there's, there's some decent boots. They were, I don't know, go, getting close to $200, but the kind of boots that are going to last a lifetime or close to it. So I have some good Columbia boots, but my toes still get cold. And I started wondering that if when we're cycling, we're, our foot isn't tense at all. And so when you're standing or walking, your foot does this thing, well, you're, put, you're making those muscles do some stuff. And so that's gonna cause some heat. Not much, but a little bit. When you're cycling, you're not putting much weight on that on your foot. And so that's my current theory about why um, my feet get cold inside of warm boots. But there's this little store called Amazon <laughs> or REI. I found electric socks. <laughs> yeah so and they're they're surprisingly not that gadgety you plug they're, 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 they have little batteries and they have a little pocket in the side for the battery there are three settings for the electric socks and so i can pull up my pants my, my pant leg and push a little button 
and it goes through hot, medium, and 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 you know barely warm. And um, I used to wear them commuting, and that was a good half hour ride every day. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're good for at least an hour. And with those socks, I was good. I was good. Electric socks. Um, I gave the woman you shot earlier, the woman I was dating. I gave her a pair of electric socks for um, for Christmas, and she was pretty happy about it. I gave her some nice, some other nice stuff too, but she also got electric socks. Any other comments on your favorite gear? Yeah, Steve, I wear electric gloves when it gets pretty cold, when it's right. single digits or, or less. And it's kind of a hassle because a rechargeable battery, you have yeah, to monitor all yeah. the time. But I can just be um, confident that my fingertips get that extra warmth That's for it. a longer ride. That's it. Yeah. Thanks for that. And, and then also under my helmet, I have a windstopper cap with ear flaps. So it's okay. thin. But it keeps the wind from going through the helmet vents. Right. And I find that warm. That's all I need, even if it's below yep. zero. It just keeps my, my head warmth in. And the helmet, um, I have to loosen it one notch, but it fits yep. very nice over. So wind stopper. Wind stopper. That, mm -hmm. Little tips like that. And often this is not the most expensive gear. The little things that... Um, Kaya mentioned that like, the very important word that gives you some trust. So, um, very good point. I'm going to stop sharing because seeing my face is no longer that. Uh, Steve? Yes. It's Joni. Hey, um, I was, hi. I was wondering if you would tell me about pokies because my hands really do get cold. Um, I really wish Jody was here because she, she absolutely loves her pokies. But do they actually attach to the bicycle or do they attach to you? They attach to the bicycle. So they're kind of, how do you still operate your your hand brakes and things? They go over the whole thing. So how can I, this is the, um, this is a handlebar. Yeah. The pogey is a, what do I have? I don't have anything. The pogey is a big cover and it secures here with a bolt that goes through this side. Okay. And they have enough structure to them that the whole thing stays in place very nicely. Okay. And so, um, and there was actually, the, the, so one of my earlier pictures, uh, a woman had pogies and they were kind of, just, they were kind of fun. They were colorful and everything else. But um, people actually put stuff in the pogies, like uh, tissues and um, hand warmers, and they support everything and they cover all your shifting and your brakes. And so you, you lose no ability to control your bike. But you'd still wear gloves? I think people wear a light glove with a pogie. Okay. I was yep. just wondering if you fell over, would you be able to get your hands out of the pogies easily? I haven't used them, okay. but I've seen them used so often that I strongly suspect that would not be a problem. Okay. The other yep. question was, somebody told me that you could put um, a plastic bag, like a bread sack around your sock and put that inside the boot. But I think your foot would get awfully sweaty that way. Mm -hmm. But it would stop any wind or any yes. snow or anything penetrating your mm -hmm. um, your foot. That's kind of a winter done, camper's yeah. trick too. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of a winter camper's trick that they use. Yeah, and I haven't tried it. I thought about doing it with biking. I haven't tried it yet though. So. Okay. If Steve has any ideas there? <laughs> Steve. Um, I'm all for trying something low cost that can help you out. Okay. And so I think it's a good starting point. Um especially like in the autumn or the spring when it's still a little cool out. And then um, you might slip on a pair of boots or, um, or, or some kind of shoe that has a mesh in it, even a little yeah. bit of mesh in it. And a little bit of mesh becomes a really strong cooler when you're going in the spring and yeah. the autumn. So some plastic then would be worth it. I would at least shove it in my bag to say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use these in case, that, in case I need them. They're light, you know, so... On a fat tire bike, is the pedal big enough for you to wear a hiking boot? Yes, the pet, the pet, yep, they are. Okay, good. Thanks. Someone in the chat asked if you clip in, if you need bike shoes with cleats on. The only clipping in footwear that I, I own are sandals. <laughs> so I don't, I don't own any kind of clip in boot or clip in shoe. Um, 
for me, for my winter cycling, which is slow, kind of a more of a mild hike in the woods, maybe a little faster sometime, but generally pretty slow. Um, clipping in doesn't feel right for me. I like clipping in on my road bike in my touring bike. Cause I like being part of the bike that way. But in the, in the snow, I want to be ready to pull my foot down. You hit a bump, you hit, you know, you hit a rock, uh, something that you can't see in the snow. Um, so I don't clip in. I haven't not trying to think back. I haven't seen a lot of people who clip in on the rides that I do in the winter time. If anybody else has other, has other experience, I'd love to hear about it. There are, um, snow boots with cleats that I've seen at the bike shop, but yeah, I would, I dismount too frequently. It would be yep. a pain to clip in and in the wet conditions or icy conditions, yeah. but yeah, I think they are popular, but I think they're, they're pretty expensive too, for how many times I would right. use clip on well, in those. I was thinking a cheaper option would be to try the cages just to see, right. you know, it's kind of, you're kind of attached to the bike, but not committed to buying an expensive pair of clip shoes. Yeah. I've decided I wouldn't be comfortable with any kind of restraint. My boots have nice um, treads on. So, and my pedals have grip, so I don't slip off the pedal. So I don't feel any need for pedal assistance in, in that way, you know, just for, I'm not a racer in the winter. So <laughs> the, then I might consider it because that, that gives you that extra, wow. but not for casual riding. Um. I just want to interrupt for a quick second. I'm going to end the chat feature. Usually we don't have chat on and um, I forgot to turn it off. The main reason is it's so much easier to try to have a conversation than to go back and forth between reading chat and trying to converse. So please feel free to ask your questions and um, even stay till after when we're um, socializing if you want to wait um, until later to ask a question, okay? So, okay, so go ahead and ask. I'll, I'll add, um, no problem, thanks. Um, something, uh, 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 a, a winter material that a lot of you probably know well is uh, merino wool. <laughs> Stuff is outstanding. Um, merino wool, it's a, it's a soft wool. It feels good against your skin. Um, and it's just, it's that base layer. And if, when I have my Merino wool on, I just, I have that extra confidence. And, and then also if you're outside exercising, hiking, cross country, skiing, cycling, you're going to sweat. I mean, you're not out there to, you're not out there to, you know, to, to just take a, a gentle, a gentle walk. Um, you're going to, you're going to work, you're going to work up a little bit. Merino absorbs that sweat in ways that I, I've never experienced with anything else. And <laughs> it doesn't smell bad. <laughs> it actually, it's, it's, it's a garment unlike anything else I wear that it, it doesn't start smelling bad right now. I still, I do laundry, I promise. But um, Merino <laughs> is really, that's a place where I spend money is on Merino because it lasts and it keeps me warm. So I use Merino for uh, top and bottom. Yes, chilling. You want to learn a fun fact about Merino wool? Please. I'm a, a fiber spinner, so um, a merino or any wool, uh, which is great for hiking, camping, wool can hold up to 30 to 40% its weight in water. Wow. And so that's why if you get wet, it, it's, it just absorbs and it doesn't go anywhere. And the other cool thing, there's an actual chemical reaction within the fiber itself and water that will warm you. Really? So when you get wet in wool, that's why you get warm, rather as in cotton, you get cold. Wow. So sheep, sheep have, have us looked out for. And merino <laughs> is the best as an underbase because it has tiny crimps and it's soft, but it will felt. So don't put it in the washer and the dryer, unless it's a machine washable one. Okay, thanks for that. I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've washed my merino, but I, I will now hand wash it because it's worth taking care of. Well, it's washable merino is interesting because they've removed the scales from the fibers, so wow. they won't felt. Very cool. So, anyway, so way to go with the wool, and and it and it's antibacterial, so you won't stink. 
I want to <laughs> like, I want to get, I want to get back to you and see if I can't send you some wool to, uh, to make, to make something nice. I mean, I bet you're making some nice garments. Did you make what you're wearing now? No, this is Goodwill, but I've got my spinning wheel and a bunch of things going in the dining room. That is so cool. That yeah. is so cool. I'll, I'll teach everybody in the Rovers how to spin a knit. Right? I think that's a presentation yeah. in the making. You could even join our bike presentation yeah. for that one. Is that a wheel? Yeah. That's a wheel. There are lots of in, fact, in the club. There, there are videos on hooking up a spinning wheel to bikes really? and using it as a generator. And I'll leave awesome. it at that. It's up awesome. To you to I like this. I like this. That's why rovers are so great. We go in every direction. I love it. That's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, great. Thanks. That's really cool. Kai, Kaya mentioned the um, electric gloves, and I'll just put in a plug for those. I finally broke down and got some this year, and they're to me they're life changing. You know, you just plug the little batteries into your computer overnight, and then the next day they're ready to go. And um, I have like slight arthritis in my fingers already, and to have the warm gloves is. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of spendy, but I, they're life, I feel like they're life changing. So I, I'm, curi I'm yeah. curious with Steven with the sock. Cause I saw the socks. Now I'm thinking maybe I'll try socks too. <laughs> what yeah, brand do you guys have? What was that time? What brand do you guys buy? I got my, I got mine at Costco and they're the field shear brand. Oh. And they, they were $99. They have five settings and they come with lithium batteries that you plug in your computer. Oh. And they're good. They last two hours on high setting or six hours on low. Um, they are a little bit of a pain because you do have to remember to charge them basically every day if you're going to use them. You kind of have to, when you come home from using them, plug them back in and charge them so they're ready. Because they're not warm at, when they're not charged, when they're not heating, they're not warm at all. Mm. Um, they're just like wind, kind of like wind protection. They don't have any insulation in them. Mm. We have to talk to Chillin about getting some merino, some some merino wool battery charged socks and gloves. I think yeah, that'd be a keeper. Yeah, <laughs> I, be I, a keeper. I swear. I mean, I talking about merino wool. I swear by merino wool socks, especially merino wool knee socks. Right. Um, because then you have kind of your whole leg encased in merino wool up to your knee, which I love. So it's it's great. That's mm -hmm. great. And now we know why merino is good. I like that. I forgot which socks I have. Um, they're in a storage room that I have. I don't have available right now. That's okay. Uh, I need them soon. I got them on Amazon. I mean, actually, Amazon's business practices are starting to concern me. So I'm going to start looking for alternatives, probably REI. Yeah. Okay. What about um, Smart Wall? Is Smart Wall similar to Marina Wall? Chillin? Chillin. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and just it's it looks like chilling, which is I don't mind. I tell people as long as you smile when you're trying to pronounce it, that's all that matters. <laughs> it's it's like um, chiffon, but with L. So you pronounce my name Shalon. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah, very nice. but uh, today it could be nice. chilling, you know. Um, all right, um, uh, Well, I'm sorry. What was the question? It was about merino. The it was about smart, smart wool. wool. What is smart wool? Smart wool. Oh, you know, it's an interesting thing. I'm wearing smart wool socks now too. They, they tout themselves as like this wonder thing and all those qualities they list on their packaging is about any wool. Really? Right. And so, but whether, and I would have guessed they, I'm guessing they use Merino wool because Merinos are prolific. That is, there's so many Merino wool. And if you really want to see a really fun picture of a Merino sheep, look at a picture of Shrek. He was a, a merino sheep that went rogue in, I don't know if it was Australia or New Zealand. It wasn't, hadn't been, has anyone seen that? He had, it wasn't sheared for years. Yes, like 400 pounds of wool or some huge yeah. amount. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of socks. <laughs> it was called Preckles. It was called Preckles. It was on Tasmania. Well, there was a few of them. I think Shrek was one of the first ones, but there oh, were a okay. few of them. Yeah. So Prickles was gone for seven years and was on Tasmania. I just heard about that. I haven't looked at it yet. That's awesome. That's awesome. I would say Smart Wool gets really good press, but I have I do not want to buy Smart Wool. They wear out or the fuzz comes off and all you're left is with whatever the inner knitting design was. It They do not last, or at least they, the ones that I bought years ago didn't last, and REI still sells them. And they say, oh, yeah, people like them. 
And they said, if you want something that really lasts, go to Darn Tough. Ooh, I've heard the same thing about yep. Darn Tough. And also I have some Bombus socks mm -hmm. that I really like and are really toasty warm. Bom Bombus is the company that will donate a pair to um, a shelter every time you buy a pair of socks. Right. Oh, how do you spell that? B-O-M-B-A-S. Okay. But Donna, you should screen share that Shrek. It's hilarious. <laughs> Let me see if I can find that. I have another wool question. Yes. I have a real itchy when I wear wool. Is this merino wool something I wouldn't itch from with if I bought different fibers? Do you know? It's not it's not itchy at all. I'm I get super itchy by wool and merino wool is it's completely different. It has no itch factor mm -hmm. to it. I, I, I avoid buying it because I'm afraid I'm going to itch myself to death, but I, <laughs> I would love to try it for the warmth. And... Okay. Yeah. And Merino has less, it, Merino has less itch because the scales are closer on the air. Oh. And also if, um, if you tend to itch from wool things, hand wash it first, because often what's happened is what's causing you to itch <laughs> is there the cleaning <laughs> process. <laughs> Oh, or take oh. your wool item and do a light rinse in a bit of hair conditioner, and then they won't okay. itch. Wow, really? Hair conditioner. Mm -hmm. That's a good hair conditioner and water, just a light soak, and the things won't itch. Very Any good. kind of wool. Any kind of wool. Mm -hmm. Really? Thank oh, you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, I, uh, you guys see the sheep? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think she's seen anything, but <laughs> that's incredible. Wow. wow. It said he only had 27 kilograms of wool. So my apologies. It wasn't 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? What is a kilogram? What? What is a kilogram? 2.2 pounds. 2.2. Oh. Okay. All the ads, sorry. Let's see. Uh, for Merino, you could also, um, during COVID, I, 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 again, I, I play it pretty safe. I, I live alone and I work at home, even though I'm, right now my work is looking for work. But nonetheless, I still work at home even before I, my, my job went away. But I go to REI <laughs> just to feel like I'm going somewhere. <laughs> and um, REI has merino wool. You could actually get your hands on and touch it. A lot of places do, I suppose. I'm just a fan of REI. I just avoided it because I figured it would itch me. So Okay. Well, I'll check it out. <clears throat> I have another question. I missed the beginning probably, but are you, is anybody rent those big bikes that you ride in the That's winter? That's a really good question. <clears throat> That's really I did go for a bike ride today, but I don't have any big tires or anything for yeah. so Now bikes used to have, last winter, they had these demos where you could ride their, their fat tire bikes for free, okay. like twice a month. And the only reason they're not doing it this winter is because of COVID. COVID, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it was super fun for free. Okay. Thank you. What's the bike store on the on the Greenway? Um, whatever the bike store is in the Greenway. Free wheel. Thank you very much. Free wheel used to have a, um, a fat bike extravaganza. And so they would have a couple dozen fat bikes out where you, you could go over a, a simple little course or not. And that's what I did before choosing a fat bike. And so I rode the bike for free for an afternoon. That was a great time. Um, so it sounds like a couple bike shops are. So um, yeah, it's something to look for sure. during COVID. Um, rentals have are traditionally higher for fat bikes because that is a it's a, it is a lot of bike there, and I think the demand is high. However, if you know anyone who who uh, is a student or staff member at the University of Minnesota, I worked at the U of M for a while. Yeah. You can get a real deal on a fat bike. And so I think I rented one. It was a crazy low price, maybe $30 for a day. To rent it? Or yeah, to rent from it. who? The University of Minnesota. If wow. you know My someone. Son goes there. Hey, your son could, you know, yeah. Sure. Ask your he son to rent every bike. day. Okay. Was that yeah. their center for outdoor adventure? I I just, it might be. It's, it's of course, 
the standard answer, it's on their website. But I, I actually <laughs> rented it from their gym area. From where they had this oh. massive that beautiful gym. Right. And so I went in there, and you know what? I think you're right, Dave. Because I went into the gym, went down the steps, and went into their outdoor center, and there were kayaks and everything else. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Oh, I should get into prices now. We talked a lot about gear. I want to talk about prices. Mm -hmm. So I went for the high end because I also I wanted the biggest I could get because I, I, I know what cycling I want to do. I want to go over anything. And so my bike has a five inch tire. The thing's massive. Um, it's, a, it's also quite a workout, but I like being able to go anywhere. Um, uh, Jody and some other friends of mine have a bike from, let me see if I can, I'll do a screen share here again. Mm -hmm. And let's see if I can, um, I got to fiddle for a second and then I'll be able to show you the exact company. There's a Minnesota company called Framed Bikes. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'll still pull up Framed Bikes. Framed Bikes sells a fat bike. It used to be for $600. Um, customer service on a couple of occasions was the worst I've ever experienced, but I never had to go back. <laughs> so um, uh, it was fine. I mean, I, I, got, I got the bike and I was ready. I just about have the website up, so I'm going to share it. Um, of course, they have more expensive models too, but if you want a starter, a starter model, don't worry about it. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. All right, so this is Framed Bikes, Minnesota company. Um, and what I'm looking for is the, is the Minnesota. It's a bike called Minnesota. If somebody sees their fat bikes, there's women's fat bikes. Let's look at those for a second. So here you go. No, they're sold out right now. Not too surprised. Bikes are sold out everywhere. But the price was $650 um, for a full-blown fat bike. Hmm. Or perhaps, no, that might be, a, that might be a, that's almost like a carbon um, mountain bike. Here it is. It's now $800. I bought it a couple of years, or friends of mine bought it a couple of years ago. So there's an $800 fat bike. Um, this, this big gear in the back is kind of important. Um, that that's let you, let you pedal real slow going up those hills. Um, Jody has a frame bike. Other friends of mine have had the bike. Um, they ride it a lot. It did well for them for a sick for what eight hundred dollars. You can also go to I, I checked out the Twin Cities um, the Facebook page for Twin Cities Bike Trading Post. There weren't that many honestly, and so I think during COVID everybody you know bikes are getting harder to find um but um places like framed do offer uh a much more reasonable fat bike um amazon also sells one i would buy a fat i would buy a low-end bike from amazon um as long as you look at the reviews just like anything else um i would not buy one from um from a big box store um uh, something like walmart it's, that's just too much of a risk. So here's a couple more $800 fat bikes. These are men's bikes. Do you have fenders? Doesn't it get kind of sloppy sometimes? That's a really good question. I do have fenders. I actually, I'm, I thought about taking my camera to the garage where my bike is, but I've, I might be too connected right now. Um, I do have fenders. They just sort of, let's see, do I have a pointer somewhere here? Yeah, your cursor. Will Is work. it working? Okay. Yep. Right about where this E and the A are, um, you can get proper fenders that, that that bolt on to the to the to the frame using these little mounts and so forth. Mine just wrap on. Um, and they're cheaper. And so I have I have fenders in front and in back. There's one that goes over here. And um, they've been fine. The the kind that have a little rubber strap. And then they, they clip onto the fender. And I even hang my bike from a car rack and then drive you know, down the freeway. And those fenders have not ever came off. So I forget, I may have paid, I forget the number, 40, 50 bucks for fenders. 
but yeah, I go over mud and I go over, you know, it's good. You're going to have slush. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a big fan of fenders. Good question. Hey, Steven. Yes. Um, you've been talking hundred percent so far about fat bikes. Um, the, the, the photos you showed of your, um, uh, trips showed mostly uh, packed or plowed trails. Is there? Any, do you know anyone who gets along with a gravel bike with you know something approaching two inch tires, or is that simply are you can be undergunned um, tire wise? I don't. I haven't ridden on that tire, so I, I can't give you an informed answer. Um, I'd be curious. But what, it, what what is it about a four inch tire on a on a on a a packed or plowed trail that that you need. Well, my you, my, my, re- my brother uh, maintains some of the trails like around River Falls, Wisconsin, and stuff like that. And uh, the problem is, I guess that the damage to the trail. So that's why they they only actually allow fat tire bikes in the winter time. Oh, because because the narrow tires rut rut they, more badly. They rut the trails, but, yeah. So that's the problem. That's, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not, I've got a gravel bike. I'm not inclined to spend another two thousand on a, a fat bike if you know <laughs> if I don't have to. Um, and like I said, is, is I there actually re- recommend going for the six or the eight hundred dollar bike if you choose to buy one. But I still see the reluctance in spending eight hundred dollars yeah. on a bike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say, Don, is there room in the in the gear closet for a couple of fat bikes? <laughs> Oh, you can put them in there. I'm sure I'll help find some room for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, hey, that that question I would love to have some fat bikes in there. Yeah, I don't think we can have enough variety to fit people. <laughs> Small, medium, and large. Actually, <laughs> ideas for what to get for gear is something rovers want to know. We want your input. So... I did have someone ask for a hot tub. I like the idea. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, yeah. What about having, I have a gravel bike kind of thing too. Does that, are there tires for that that are studded? Yes. Yes, there are. Yep. I also, for, um, for ordinary commuting to work, I actually prefer not to take my fat bike because the salt on the roads and so I went to a Twin Cities has some. Yes. All right. I think that was an accident. Okay. Um, the Twin Cities has some great bike shops that refurbish um, older bikes. And a lot of times these same shops have a social mission and they will get inner city kids to learn how to fix bikes or they also donate bikes. Um, and so I went to one of those shops, got a refurbished bike. And had stud, studded tires put on that. That was my first um, studded tire bike. And I never rode, rode studs before. So I took it in the alley behind the shop, found some open, some really icy stuff. And I, I, I was going, I don't know, maybe seven, eight miles an hour. And I just locked the brakes entirely. Um, and the bike slid straight. Oh. Um, studded tires, you can still slide. Absolutely, of course. But it takes care of a whole bunch of um, of sliding. Yeah. Um, just trying to think of anything else. David, can you talk a little bit about? Can, that? can you talk a little bit about about where to ride? Uh, so I, I forget who it was talked about uh, trails. Someone knew someone who did some grooming. I missed uh, who that was, but um, um, can you talk a little bit about about where 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 to ride? Where where I'll offer so I'll, I'll like where, where there are groomed trails. I'll, um, I'll, I'll defer to anyone else. Um, I've ridden a lot in uh, Crosby Farm. Um, I've ridden in um, Hidden Falls. Has some nice uh, has some nice trails. Uh, I just started riding in. Oh man, what's the, what's that Theodore Worth? I ha- I'm not sure about the winter riding, but I, I'm pretty sure they're open in the winter time. So pretty much any place that any single track is going to have, uh, I, I'm guessing, is going to have winter riding. Um, in the summertime, I led some rides through Battle Creek, and Battle Creek Creek Park quickly became one of my favorites. We saw fat bikes on trails in Battle Creek, so I'm, I'm just guessing those trails are open in the wintertime. Uh, that was in the summertime. Uh, we saw fat bikes, we saw mountain bikes. 
I'm really, I'd be really surprised if that if those are not available in the winter time for um, for winter cycling. Any other suggestions? Yeah, I can confirm Battle Creeks uh, it does bad tire biking. Also, Lake Elmo Park, Sunfish Lake Park, and Elm Creek. Thanks. Uh, I think Murphy Hanner End is open in the winter too. And then there, I guess there's another one out in Chanhassen, I've, Hawks Ridge it's called. Uh, I haven't tried it though. My brother's tried it. <laughs> He's a big fan of. <laughs> cool. So in, in the South Metro, Lebanon Hills is real popular for mountain biking and fat, bio, fat tire biking. Also down by the Minnesota River is great in, in, in summer or winter. A lot of people ride down there. I didn't know about half these until this conversation. So it's great hearing it. Can you Google to just get the trails in the city? Does that work for bike trails? Yeah, it does work. I find that Googling for bike routes can take a while. Okay. Um, and so I think what I learned just during this conversation, and I'm glad it was recorded because I didn't write them all down. Um, what I learned here was probably the equivalent of about two or three hours of Googling, in my experience. Wow. Yep. That is, does take a long time. Um, there's a Mountain Bike Association. Yes. The Mountain Bike Association has a website that, that lists a lot of trails. Oh, I, I don't tend to go on trails a lot because I, I commute by bike, and so I just go wherever I'm going. And so I don't need to look for specific bike trails. And I ride studded tires and um, when the conditions call for it. It's just a mountain bike that I added studded tires to. So they're about two and a half inch. And I feel like I have a really good surface for that. But I haven't tried them in the deep snow or on off-road trails. I'd, I'd like to. So basically you're road biking, you're, you're road biking in the winter then? Well, it's a mountain bike with studded tires, so I wouldn't. Well, it, I guess. But it's, you're riding it's, on it's pavement. A, it's not a road bike, but I ride um, on city trails, bike trails like a Minnehaha Creek and, and such, and Min, um, and Min, Minnesota River, Mississippi River down there, but also street side. And I just pick um, side streets mostly. To ride on just to and how, how does that work for t t tell me about tell me about doing that in the winter because that's kind of you know just having a gravel bike and if i'm not going to be riding yeah. um yeah. Uh, single well, track trails with that I, you know that kind of restricts me to paved trails how, how how does that work for you is it uh are you are you on the pavement a lot or do you stay upright mostly yeah mostly <laughs> um, i i have a few years now but i've probably started to ride a little more conservatively. Yeah, because it sounds I, dicey to me with the freeze days, of thaw we have here. Yeah. Um, I, I said it sounds sort of dicey to me with the, the warmer winters and the freezing and thawing that um, yeah. you never know when you're going to come upon uh, ice patches. Yeah, that's the same with walking. I just figure in biking, I'll get there faster <laughs> than okay. walking. Okay. That studs you just, give me a uh, very nice grip, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think the studs, studs, help, a lot. studs help a lot. Yeah, because I, I used to bike year round and, and I've had a few, you know, where the bike suddenly disappears from under you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to get some studded tires, I think. Yeah, I yeah. have front and back. Some people it, it, only have front yeah. for a little more steering, yeah. but I, I want both. And mine were, they're $80 each, but the right time of spring, I had buy one, get one half off or. Wow some deals so shopping helped but i'm on my second pair of studded tires in 10 years so they do last quite a bit and when it's all dry days i just switch to my um, road bike and i okay the studs thank you helps. there yeah, are two kinds of studs by the way when i need them oh sorry what kind yeah, there are two kinds of studs and the steel studs uh don't last too long and they don't they're not very good on dry pavement they'll it'll wear them out but if you get the is it carbide, Stephen? I think it is carbide. It's carbide. Yeah. yeah, carbide is, and those are the ones, the good ones to add. Um, you can ride them on dry They'll pavement. They'll last forever. Yeah, according to at least that. the bike shop, they said you could ride them on dry pavement. It, it'd be okay, I guess. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Are they noisy on 
Can dry paper? Makes kind of a sizzle, <laughs> like. <tsh>. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People hear you. They'll, they'll notice you on stud. It's like, what's that bike doing? <laughs> yeah. Great comments. Mm -hmm. And great questions. Yes, please, Sean. I'm, I suggested this once at a Rovers meeting for a snowshoeing during this Barry's wonderful snowshoeing um, presentation. But if you're looking for an urban place for your bike riding, NC Art, there's the CEZ, the Creative Enterprise Zone, which is between 280 and University. So if you can go online and look up CEZ as in zebra and go look at all the murals that have been painted on the sides of the industrial buildings. Wow. Wide streets, you just watch out for the occasional semi now and then, and there's a couple of breweries tucked back in there. But if you're looking to combine art and, and uh, something for your, a change for your bike riding, that could be kind of cool to do this winter too. And it's local. Cool. Perfect. Those are great ideas. So do you guys all have access to the, um, the group, um, e-group? because we can share all these ideas on the e-group as well. That would be um, great to have, and you can go back and look at it anytime and get that information back. So what was that website again for the mural bike ride? C-E-Z, it stands for Creative Enterprise Zone, and they have maps available too. All right, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.